Uh, and there are some research studies looking at the difference between a posterior approach and an anterior approach, and an anterior approach seems to do better than a posterior approach. I, I think PPP does work a lot better than the just plain D5 in patients that will require less treatments. Um, when we were at Roosevelt, you know, we yeah. don't have biologics, and so we're doing D5 um, with ropivacaine. <clears throat> but when we're, um, if, if, I, if I have the option, I'm going to use a, uh, probably a uh, platelet pour. I'd be interesting, and maybe I'll reach out to a few people to ask if anybody's done A2M inside mm -hmm. the joint to see if that works better than platelet pour plasma. That's a, a thought. I think the big the big thing is to um, get some numbing inside the joint because you want to really make sure you go through passive range of motion after the procedure and then getting that volume in to help expand it. Uh, and there are some research studies looking at the difference between a posterior approach and an anterior approach. And an anterior approach seems to do better than a posterior approach. So basically you're taking the needle and you're putting it, you're threading it in between the corcohumeral ligament and the, the long head of the biceps tendon. And then when you do your injection, you're still going intra-articular with it, but it's having a more acute effect on that corcohumeral mm -hmm. ligament and those anterior uh, mm -hmm. ligament complexes. But I, I have personally found it to be a tougher injection to do, but it seems to, at least in the literature, do better. I think the other thing that sometimes gets overlooked is the suprascapular nerve. And so I hydrodissect the, the suprascapular nerve with all of my um, adhesive capsulitis treatments because that nerve is usually uh, implicated to some degree. And then the other thing is there is almost always, an un, even though it's idiopathic, there's almost always an underlying shoulder pathology that started it. And it's usually a rotator cuff tear.